Hi everybody, Steven here. If you've been watching any of my NSX Advanced Load Balancer videos, uh, previously known as Avi Networks Advanced Load Balancer, uh, this video we're gonna cover how to create a cloud connector, uh, an NSX T cloud connector to be more specific. So if you wanna see that and watch my build, stick around. Hi everybody, thanks for sticking around, I really appreciate it. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at how do we create a cloud connector, more specifically an NSXT cloud connector. Again, this is just part three of basically what I've been doing in setting up the NSX Advanced Load Balancer, AKA AVI Networks, okay? Um, so we're just gonna do the cloud connector, that's enough for now, then later on we'll start creating virtual services and all that, but that'll be another video, doing this one bit at a time. Now I normally like to throw this out at this point, by the way, I hit the thousand subscribers, great stuff, thank you very much, really appreciate you folks for subscribing to the channel. If you haven't subscribed to the channel and this is stuff you like, please support the channel by subscribing. It costs nothing. Uh, there's also super thanks if you want to support the channel. But anyways, all you got to do is click on that subscribe button and away you go. I appreciate it. So why don't we jump right into it? So <clears throat> let's get into um, setting up our cloud connector. Now, you might think, oh, I'm going to go into NSX and I'm going to do that, right? You used to prior to 4.x. Um, <clears throat> you would actually, sorry, is that correct? Um, I have to think about that one for a minute. I, I don't think you could do it prior to 4.x. Anyways, there's changes to the interface. I talked about that in the very first video. Uh, but under networking, you see, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, you see load balancer there. That's not the advanced load balancer. That's the generic native one. Uh, again, notice this one is being deprecated probably by the next major release that don't quote me. But maybe by, let's say, version 5.x, it'll probably be gone, and you have to do everything through the advanced load balancer. So you don't do it through here. We've already deployed our um, controller cluster. That's the three uh, that we've deployed. Now, what you do is you actually connect to the uh, AVI network. Let me actually uh, go to there. Let me go to uh, another tab here, and let's connect to it. So mine is site a dash nsx advanced load balancer dash 01 i only got the one appliance i deleted the other two just to keep save resources remember you can deploy one it works but that would really be in a lab environment to proof of concept you want three for production okay uh so i got rid of the other two just to save on cpu memory resources um this is the the main screen for the uh, the AVI, uh, or sorry, the NSX Advanced Load Balancer. We'll look at a lot of these settings, uh, but right now what we want to do is go into Infrastructures and Cloud, and when you click on that, <clears throat> you'll see that there's a default cloud connector. Remember, this product is truly multi-cloud support. You can be using just physical boxes. You don't believe in virtualization, um, or you can be using AWS or Azure or IBM or Google or whatever or nsx or vmware right so you can create your own cloud connector now notice when i go to there's a default one which you could technically use notice it says here no orchestrator that means there's no automation set up you mainly deploy everything like the service engines now we haven't done service engines yet i will get into that in another video because that can get pretty crazy <clears throat> um, i could edit this default one and change it um, I, again, I can change it to whatever type of cloud that I want. Notice I got Linux Cloud, Google, Azure, AWS. You don't see, you see uh, vCenter and vSphere, but you don't see NSX here. So I don't get that as a choice here. Um, I'm going to cancel that. Let's close it. Or I can, from the drop down, create a new cloud connector, right? Notice over here, I see NSX over here now, right? Uh, it'll be interesting to see if they rechange this name here. It may say NSX T or NSX really doesn't matter this is the one that we're going to create so i could actually do it from here now i just want to point something out let's go into administration and let's go into licensing this is kind of something i noticed which is rather interesting right again you can add your licenses here or whatever i'm going to click on the settings here sorry let's go back under licensing and i click on the settings and again it defaults as this enterprise tier uh, and depends on what license notice this one here basic tier the NSX Advanced Loader Basic, replacement for the NSX Load Balancer. That's the native one. Oh, okay, I'll select that and I hit save. And then give it a few seconds to churn our way and do it, uh, there and do its thing, okay? It does take maybe about 20 seconds or so. So 
I've set it for that. Now let's go in and let's go back to the infrastructure. Let's go into, <clears throat> excuse me, clouds. And let's notice this is green or sorry, yellow now. I have to refresh the screen here. There we go. It's green now. So, okay. Let's edit this. Notice now it says no orchestration. That's all I got. So, okay. Can't use that one. Let's cancel it. Notice under the, the create now. It only lets me do no orchestration or NSXT. No orchestration again is <clears throat> you're not you don't have any automation. Everything is gonna be manually deployed. Service engines, everything. You gotta do everything manually, okay? Which I can't really see people doing that. But anyway, whatever, it's an option. Um, so I can select my NSXT cloud if I want to, and I can start giving it a name and specifying a few things. Now, I'm not gonna do that. I gotta cancel. There's a few things we need to do prior to getting to this stage. I just wanted to show you this, right? So first of all, in my NSX environment, I have to have a tier one gateway and some segments deployed, okay? So let's go into um, networking. Let's go into my, I got my tier zeros. Actually, let me show you my topology. There's my topology. I have a, come on. I got a tier zero gateway. I got a tier one and I've got some web app and database segments. Again, if you've been watching any of my NSX videos, this should sound pretty familiar. So I've deployed my environment. I got north south going on, but I don't care at this point. I just want to create this cloud connector. So I've got my tier one gateway. What I need now <clears throat> is when I go to deploy service engines, it's going to say, hey, what networks do you want this service engine to be connected to? Remember, service engine generally at least have two connections one for the management network and one for a data plane network so i need to create some segments here for that okay so i gotta go in i'm gonna add a segment i'm gonna call it again i don't have much of an imagination advanced load balancer management okay and again it's going to be part of my overlay transport zone um prod overlay again it has to be an overlay i haven't heard any changes on that which is kind of a little weird to me but whatever uh what gateways it connected to it's going to be connected to my tier one gateway and was it uh what's its ip going to be it's going to be uh 172.16.70.1 slash 24. so remember it's going through my tier one gateway so it needs my tier one gateway needs that ip address and so the management network that i'm creating for my service engines will be on this segment so okay i'm going to say save that and no, I don't want to make any more changes. Now, I talked about this in the the first lecture, like the Advanced Load Balancer 101, uh, where you could actually have your service engines on the same segment as your web servers, let's say, or on different. I'm doing a different. I'm going to have a, a load balancers on the on the advanced, and then the um, the other segment will basically be uh, from you know my for my web servers. So let's create a segment for the data plane. So let's go add segment. I'm going to call this advanced load balancer data plane. Okay, I spell that right. Yep. Okay. Let's get tier one transport zone. It's going to be the prod overlay again prod overlay and then my data plane on this one will be 172.16.80.1 oops i make a mistake there 16.80.1 slash 24 it's on that one great 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 and i go to save and do i want to do any other changes no now there is something that i should probably do at this point here actually you know what? I'll save that for when we get into uh, the next video. Great. I got these two done. Beautiful. There's another thing I need to do. <laughs> okay. This is all before you start creating your cloud connector. I need to go into vSphere now and create a content library. If you don't know how to do that, I, I'm going to do it right now. It's really simple. But if you want to learn more about it, I actually have a video on content libraries. Okay. So I'm just going to go into here, content library. And I'm just going to say create a new one. And I'm going to call this whatever, NSX, NSX advanced load balancer whatever call it something that makes sense don't call it content library one or something that makes sense and then that's my vcenter server great i'll click on next this is going to be a local content library i'm not going to have it subscribed i'm not going to publish it or anything like that okay so this is just going to be for my advanced load balancer if you want to learn more about these and what they mean watch my video so i'm just going to leave it at local um I'm not going to enable publishing. Okay, watch that video if you're not sure about that. I don't need to apply the security to it. Uh, I'm going to click on next. And then what storage do I want to use? I actually have I actually have two clusters in my environment. I have um, uh, and I basically 
uh, where am I going to store this content library? I'm going to put it on my uh, second cluster, which is my vSAN data store here. And I'm going to click next and I'm going to click finish. Now, I said we need to create a content library. I didn't tell you why. Now, notice over here, you'll see if I, I click on the content library, there's nothing in there. Okay. It's absolutely nothing. So, why do we need to do this? Service engines are VMs, okay, especially in our environment that we're playing with right now. They're VMs. So, when I create um, service engine groups and I create ser uh, virtual services, it needs to deploy uh, that service engine and it's going to use content libraries to do that. So, this is why we have to do that. So, again, number one, make sure you've got your tier one gateway, you got your segments for your service engines deployed. Are created then go into vSphere create your content library now I'm ready to go into the NSX advanced a little better balancer click on create NSXT cloud you're gonna give it a name I'm gonna call mine I'll call mine whatever um, NSX dash cloud all right uh, and then what type of cloud? Well, it's an SXT cloud connector and I kind of showed you this already so um, now this is asking me from a DHCP Remember, your service engines have a management port. They need to talk to the uh, AVI controllers, okay? So it needs to talk to that controller cluster. So that's over like the management network. Do you want to use DHCP for that? I'm going to say no, okay? Now, when it deploys like the service engines, for example, and it creates objects, do you want to pre uh, prefix something to it? So I might do um, uh, something like uh, nsx dash clue. NSX dash. Actually, you know what? I'll do something like this. My NSX. So I'll prepend that to it all the time. Now, under here, for under NSXT now, notice it kind of jumped over to this tab as I scroll down. It kind of jumps through these tabs. NSXT, it's asking me, hey, what's your NSX or NSXT manager information? So I'm going to click on create, uh, change credentials. Now, I did forget to do something. <laughs> Uh, actually, let's see if it'll let me do this here. Uh, yes, it will. Okay, so it's asking me, let me cancel that. Actually, you know what, let me just cancel this whole thing out. We didn't go that far. I could do it from here, but eh, let's do it. Let's do it like this, yes, to continue. Okay, what I should have done, so I created, I made sure my tier one gateways are deployed. I created those segments. I did my content library. What I should do, and again, I could have done it at that point, it's under administration, under user credentials, user credentials here. So I'll click on that. I'll say create. I'm going to create a, a user credential. I'll call this um, uh, NSX user. I'll put it all lowercase. NSX user. And it's going, not user. <laughs> Let's try that again. And it's going to be an NSXT user, and then I need to put in the credentials for my NSX uh, manager here, right? So you're one bang, one bang. So this user, NSX user, is what we'll use to authenticate to my NSX manager. I'm going to save that. Guess what? Uh, I'm not going to say don't update. Then I'm going to go create another one for my vCenter. So I'll create one called VC user. And what type is it? It is a vCenter. And again, my vCenter administration credentials. So, yeah. Local. Actually, I just, I just clicked on that. And then I'll save that. Great, I just created those users. Let me just say, don't save. There's the users now we're gonna do it. Let's go back into cloud, clouds. Let's back in and add NSXT. Again, I called mine, what, uh, NSX-cloud. And then um, type is NSXT cloud uh, prefix. I call it my NSX, whatever you want to call it, like my NSXT or whatever NSX. Um, now here's my NSX credentials. Let me go change credentials. Now it's asking me for the NSXT manager address. I'm going to type in site A-NSX MGR-01.vclass.local. I could have typed in the IP. Uh, I'm going to put in the fully qualified domain name. Then over here to credentials, there's the user I just created. So it's going to say, oh, that user has this user ID and password. Great. I'm going to click connect. There's my NSXT. What trans now, now that it's authenticated to NSX Manager, it says what transport zones are we using here? Again, I'm going to give it my overlay transport zone, prod overlay. Uh, 
what tier one gateway am I using? This is why I need to have it pre-deployed. I'm picking tier one gateway 01. What overlay segment? Notice this is management network it's asking me about, okay? What overlay segment? And I'm going to pick advanced load balancer management. Then it's got the data networks. It's saying, okay, what what's your data plane networks? What we're going to use? So first of all, what transport zones? Again, I got my prod overlay. I'm going to pick that. And then my data network uh, segments, I'm going to go add. And come on. Oops. Before I do that, i got to pick my gateway first. Then pick the segment. Events. Um, load balancer data plane. So it's asking me what gateway and what segment. Now, both of them are the same. The tier one gateway is both the same for management and my data plane in my example. But I guess they could be different, right? Now down at the bottom, it's asking me for my vCenter. This is what this connector is all about. It's like, I need to connect to all these things. I need to authenticate to them because that's what the connector is all about. I'm going to click on add. And then uh, I'm going to say change credentials. And then at that point, it's asking me for my vCenter server. Uh, notice it came out with the IP address there. Uh, um, and it got that actually from the NSX manager, right? I'm actually just going to type in site a vcenter server appliance dash 01. This is my fully qualified domain name vclass.local. I could have used the IP, but you know what? Whatever. I'm just going to use the fully qualified domain name. And I didn't hit enter. Site a dash vcenter server appliance dash 01 vclass.local. Actually, you know what? I don't think it's going to let me do that. Yeah. It wants the IP. There we go. So it's picky. It wants the IP. What vCenter credentials? There's that VC user I created, right? So there's the IP, my vCenter server. There's the, my credentials I'm using that I created before. I click connect. And then at that point, it's asking me about my content library. So I'll say content library. There's that content library. I probably should have said NSX ALB dash uh, CL or something like that, content library or whatever. So I'll, I'll select that. And then at that point, um, connect at that point I'm done okay let's pick content library and I forgot to give it a name site a dash v center server apply slash one so it's asking me for the name of the v center server appliance right I, this is just the name here right um, yeah so now over here I can hit done right notice that was grayed out before All right, at that point, I got pretty much everything. I got my NSX, I got my vCenter. Uh, there's other stuff for IP address management and DNS. I don't need to en enter any of those. I'm just gonna use the defaults. And then at that point, I'll, I'll say save. I'll probably do some videos and some of those advanced settings. Now, I've got my NSX cloud over here. Notice it's yellow. I'm just gonna hit the F5 and it's now green, all right? That's how simple it is to set up the cloud connector. The next stuff that we have to do, we're actually now ready to start creating virtual services and virtual IPs and whatnot, but I'm gonna do that in a separate video uh, because we gotta set up service engines and all that kind of stuff. So anyways, but that's it. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, hit that like button if you found this entertaining or at least a little bit useful. Again, please subscribe to the channel. Um, that supports me. And if you found this useful, please again, support the channel by subscribing. Uh, that's it. See you in the next one. Bye for now.